Three children abandoned and living in an apartment with their eight year old brothers remains. It is a case that has rocked this community. Today, neighbors gathered for a vigil to remember the little boy who police say was killed by his mother's boyfriend. <laughs> We bring Taco Bell to us. Fuck all that thick ass meat shit. Put some, put some blue and white stones in my for all, oh, oh, y'all ain't see, y'all seen that. She gave me that for Valentine's Day. And that shit like that, cause I had to get, I broke that bitch. So I had to get that bitch started back together, nigga. New developments in the horrific case of child abuse and abandonment. The social media posts linked to the murder suspect, plus what we've learned about his criminal history. We unravel the devastating case of eight year old Kendrick Lee of Harris County, Texas. The emerging details have shaken communities nationwide. How could such evil befall an innocent child? Why did so many fail to protect this little boy before it was too late? We'll examine the missed chances, breakdowns, and systemic failures, as well as the profound emotional impact this tragedy has had. Settle in, because this will be an extensive, in-depth analysis. Let's go back to the quiet Thanksgiving week of 2020. While families across the country counted blessings, Eight-year-old Kendrick spent his final days being brutally beaten inside apartment 12,022 at the City Park 2 complex in West Harris County. Kendrick lived there with his three brothers ages 15, 9, and 7, as well as his mother, 35-year-old Gloria Williams, and her boyfriend, 31-year-old Brian Coulter. Neighbors at the complex later told reporters they rarely saw any children coming or going from that second floor apartment. Some didn't even realize children lived there until the news broke. But Kendrick and his brothers were there in the days before Thanksgiving that year, likely hoping to share in the holiday feast like children nationwide. Instead, Kendrick's last days were filled with unconscionable violence. According to police reports, sometime between November 20th and November 29th of 2020, Coulter viciously attacked little Kendrick. We don't know what prompted this savage beating, but Kendrick's brothers witnessed the crime, later saying Coulter punched and kicked the 80-pound boy repeatedly until motionless. Imagine Kendrick's terror. Confused why this man was hurting him as his mother failed to protect him, the utter despair, knowing his life was ending alone in a room of people meant to keep him safe. It's incomprehensible. Kendrick's brothers later told social workers that by the attack's end, Kendrick's eyes were swollen shut, his face distorted by bruises. Coulter had kicked and punched the very life out of the child. The horror continued. After realizing he killed the boy, Coulter wrapped Kendrick's broken body in a blanket and stashed him away. Kendrick's mother, Williams, claims she later found her son dead under that blanket. As a parent, this is where I struggle most to understand. A shred of humanity would compel you to immediately call 911, plead that this was a nightmare, desperately try to detect any spark of life. But Williams admits she didn't call the police or medics. She didn't rush her son to the hospital or hold his hand as he took final breaths. She covered it up to save herself and kept living with Kendrick's body laying feet from where she slept and ate. How could a mother choose self-preservation over honoring her baby's life? The child she carried nine months, who took first steps under her watch, who smiled with unconditional trust. It's depraved and chilling. Yet life continued in apartment 12,022 for months after Kendrick's death under grotesque conditions. Williams later told authorities she feared losing custody of her other children if she reported the crime. 
she likely feared prison herself for neglecting to protect her son. And so she convinced herself erasing Kendrick was acceptable. She forced her surviving sons, teenagers themselves, to keep the secret too. Imagine their excruciating trauma living with their little brother's decaying corpse, having to pretend things were fine when others were over, silenced and unable to seek help while the stench of death filled their home. Psychologists say such living nightmares inflict almost incomprehensible trauma on a child's developing brain, rewiring the nervous system to be constantly alert for threats, shattering their innate sense of security, trust, and hope. Recovery is intensive due to the neurological changes. So as holidays came and went, as life moved on outside apartment 12,022 walls, Kendrick's body lay wrapped and hidden. Until March of 2021, when Williams decided to move on, leaving her surviving sons behind with their brother's remains. By then, Kendrick had been reduced to a skeletal corpse after stewing in Texas humidity for almost one year. His fragile bones decayed in the heat. His siblings lived on in increasing squalor, left to fend for themselves without enough food or adult care. And their brother's festering body reminded them daily of lurking evil. Where was Williams going? Investigators later learned she was just 15 minutes away in another Houston apartment, having landed on her feet and started fresh miles from the nightmare she abandoned. Meanwhile, her boys back in the apartment spiraled deeper into deprivation. The two younger boys later told social workers their 15-year-old brother scraped together any food he could find to keep them alive. But he was just a child himself. Without an adult, electricity was cut, leaving them in darkness with garbage piles attracting swarms of roaches and flies. The apartment was devoid of any furniture, bedding, or living essentials. Worst was the sickening stench of decay leaching from Kendrick's corpse. Somehow, those three boys found resilience to survive month after month in those conditions. And the entire time, the outside world was oblivious. Until Sunday, October 24th, 2021, when a 911 call came into Harris County dispatch. On the line was a nervous teenage boy explaining he hadn't seen his parents in months and his little brother had been dead inside the apartment for over one year. Responding officers were horrified to confirm everything the 15-year-old reported was true. Kendrick's skeletal remains were found on a bedroom floor, covered by a blanket, with roaches skittering over the bones. The two younger boys were malnourished with injuries, Given the squalid conditions, it seemed impossible these young children had endured such depravity for so long without intervention. Where was code enforcement, relatives, and the state of Texas? How could this happen? In subsequent days, more alarming revelations emerged. Neighbors in adjacent units reported complaining many times to management about a potent, sickly smell from apartment 12,022. But nothing was done. No welfare checks or authorities alerted. The stench was dismissed as trash or food spoiling. Had anyone fully investigated, young Kendrick could possibly have been saved. Other residents said they occasionally saw the 15-year-old wandering alone, looking forlorn and begging for food. Those offering snacks said he only accepted packaged items, nothing cooked. He was sleeping on the side. Chapman says she first met the 15-year-old boy who were told called 911, claiming he and his siblings had been living with the remains of their brother in the room next to his. And I asked him if he was hungry, and he said, yeah, and I brought him out some food and some drinks. Harris Hill. Honestly, I'm disgusted. If I knew something was wrong with any of those kids, I would have took all of them. According to the Harris County Sheriff's Office, the mother of the boys and her boyfriend were brought in for questioning but released. Child Protective Services sent us this statement that says in part, the agency is seeking emergency custody of the three boys. Oh, he wouldn't talk about his parents. Erica says she didn't want to push the boy too hard with questions, hoping he would open up to her. Because I did not want him not to come to me for food. If you're that hungry, I want him to keep coming to me. At least I know he was eating. Him and I would take him and his brothers. Done. And that he needs to keep his head up. This ain't his fault. 
seeming too paranoid to trust it wasn't poisoned or drugged. Additional neighbors who saw Williams come and go never saw children with her, yet none thought to question if she was actually parenting kids in that unit. Had someone spoken up sooner, perhaps tragedy could have been prevented. But the boy's suffering went unnoticed until the conditions became too much for the 15-year-old to bear any longer. In his 911 call, the boy's voice cracked with emotion as he unpacked the everyday horrors. When asked how long since he'd seen parents, he responded, since March. Nearly eight months without his mother's face, voice, or touch. When asked about his deceased brother, the boy hesitated before blurting out, Kendrick, last year. He could barely get words out, the pain and anguish flooding back. As he led officers to the blanket-covered bone pile that was his baby brother, Tears likely flowed at finally being rescued. Yet despite the ghastly scene, Brian Coulter and Gloria Williams incredibly were allowed to walk free after police questioning. Coulter literally got away with murder. And Williams faced no consequences for abandoning her children with their brother's corpse in squalid conditions. For the first 24 hours, it seemed no justice would come. Until finally the next day, Tuesday, October 26, 2021, arrest warrants were issued on felony charges. New developments in the horrific case of child abuse and abandonment. The social media posts linked to the murder suspect, plus what we've learned about his criminal history. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Christine Noel. We are learning new details about the man at the center of a gruesome child abuse case. Brian Coulter is accused of killing his girlfriend's eight-year-old child and severely beating three others. Those boys were found abandoned in an apartment with their brother's skeletal remains. Now investigators have revealed Coulter's past, which includes an arrest in Luling. Our Michael Lepardi is live downtown tonight with the latest in these developments. Michael? Christine, while the suspect remains in jail, that's just behind us here. Tonight, a police chief offered details about that past arrest, and we're also hearing from the suspect's family. Tonight, 31-year-old Brian Coulter is in the Harris County Jail on a murder charge, and a law enforcement officer says it's not his first time behind bars. The police chief in Lowling, Texas, about two hours west of Houston, says Coulter was arrested there last November after officers received a report of an intoxicated person at a Bucky's, possibly armed with a handgun. They did find him to have a weapon on his person. And because of the fact that he was in possession of marijuana at the time, even though he was a... Uh, did have a license to carry uh, that constituted unlawfully carrying a weapon. He was arrested on that charge. The police narrative says Gloria Williams was in the same car as Coulter. It was just Coulter and Williams in the car. There were no children in the car with him. The chief says Coulter was booked into jail on November 23rd and bonded out on the 29th. Today, a family representative confirmed Coulter's Instagram page, which includes pictures and videos of food. She wanted a bigger one than that one. I got it, the biggest one in the whole damn stuff. Now she come out, she want a bigger one. She don't even, she can't even find, find, find one as big as she wants. I guess we're gonna have to customize some shit. Put some, put some, put some, put some blue and white stones in there for all, all oh, y'all ain't see, y'all seen that. She gave me that for Valentine's Day. But that we really look good, mama. You know what I'm saying? We live at five, Instagram. Okay, well, like y'all see, you've had the cooking, man, it's taking man's turn. Yeah, man. Then tomorrow, take a trunk. For real. Already.
Keep in mind, the Harris County Sheriff said the three children found in the apartment appeared malnourished. Coulter's family said in a statement, quote, We are deeply saddened by the events that have unfolded. This is not who we raised our son to be. Our hearts and prayers go out to those brave children. We did not know the children involved, but we are praying for the soul of the child that passed, his remaining siblings and family, and all affected by this horrible tragedy. They added their relationship with Coulter has been distant for years. The police chief says that information about last year's arrest may help investigators work on a timeline for the current case. Reporting live outside of the jail downtown, Michael Lopardi, KPRC 2 News. Capital murder for Coulter, injury to a child and tampering with evidence for Williams. The community breathed relief as the couple was arrested that night while searching online for news stories about themselves at a local public library. Now to some breaking news. A mother and her boyfriend are under arrest tonight in connection with a case of three boys left abandoned in an apartment with the remains of their younger brother. This is our first look at Gloria Williams and Brian Coulter, both facing multiple charges. And tonight we are learning more about the little boy who had been dead for about a year. Lauren Tellerico is live at the jail with the update on this awful, awful case. Lauren. Lena and Mia, we now know that the boyfriend is charged with the murder of this little boy who we now know was eight years old at the time that he died. The mother is facing several charges here, including injury to a child by omission and tampering with evidence. In this case, a corpse. Now, there are a lot of questions like how did these three children live for so long, allegedly abandoned while their brother's remains decomposed in the next room? Here's what we've uncovered so far. Here's a look at Brian Coulter and Gloria Williams, charged in connection to a case that has shocked so many. It was this past Sunday that a 15-year-old boy living inside an apartment off Greencrest Drive called the Harris County Sheriff's Office asking for help. He said he and his two siblings, 11 and 7 years old, had been abandoned here in the same apartment where his 8-year-old brother had been dead for a year. Ailey ISD confirms the children had attended the district, but hadn't been in school since May of 2020. They also say their mother, Gloria Williams, was listed as the sole custodian. Investigators say the surviving children were malnourished when found, surviving off food the mother would occasionally bring over. And neighbors we spoke to said they had given them food too, but had no idea how bad things were inside that apartment. CPS says that tonight those kids are in foster care. As for the skeletal remains of that eight-year-old boy, the medical examiner lists the cause of death as homicide, citing multiple blunt force injuries. We are expecting the mother and boyfriend to be in court over the next several hours. Of course, we will keep you updated on this very sad and disturbing story. Reporting live from the Harris County Jail, I'm Lauren Tellerico, KHOU 11 News. Despite having months to cover tracks, it seems neither expected to face charges. Once in custody, the legal process began. Coulter's first court appearance was bizarre. The 31-year-old appeared confused, asking the judge absurd questions about parole eligibility on a first-degree murder charge. Brian Coulter went before the judge this morning for the very first time. He's accused of killing an eight-year-old child last November and leaving his body in an A-leaf apartment. And as we have reported, three children were also found abandoned at home on Sunday. Their mother, Gloria Williams, is also charged in the case. KPRC 2's Brittany Jeffers has the very latest from downtown Houston. Today is the first time since we have seen Brian Coulter since his arrest. And today, when that courtroom, when the judge formally read his charges to him and asked if he understood, he then repeated the charge as well as the possible sentence back to her. Now, he is charged with murder in the death of that eight-year-old child whose skeletal remains were found inside of an apartment last Sunday. Now, he also signed a legal consequences form today on an emergency protection order. This states that he's not allowed to have any direct or indirect contact with any of the three surviving children in that home. Part of his bond condition states he'd be required to wear an ankle monitor as well as be under house arrest and not have any contact with the co-defendant, his girlfriend, and the child's mother, Gloria Williams.
Williams is charged with injury to a child and tampering with evidence. Now, bond in this case does remain at $1 million. And one of the chief prosecutors with the district attorney's office, Andrea Bell, tells us she believes that this was a respectable bond given the charges and believes it takes community safety into account. Still, she says this case has been tough on everyone involved. So as one of the chief prosecutors in child fatality, this is the only type of case I deal with. Uh, I will say that this particular case um, is such a gross deviation from what we expect humans to behave like, uh, that it's been very emotionally difficult and taxing on the investigators, uh, the DA's office, and the priority should be making sure that the surviving children get all of the help that they need. Now, something else to note in this case, the presiding judge, Judge Morton, recused himself this morning. Instead, Kelly Johnson filling in. Now, this means that this case will now be transferred to a new court and will likely impact Gloria Williams' uh, court hearing date. She was supposed to appear tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, but the district attorney's office tells us this will likely be pushed back until next week. I'm Brittany Jeffers, KPRC 2 News. His mental competency is now being evaluated. Williams also appeared before a judge. Her bail set at just over $900,000. Good morning, Ms. Williams. Ma'am, you're charged with the third degree felony of injury to a child by omission, the first degree felony of injury to a child causing serious bodily injury, the second degree felony of tampering with evidence uh, when that evidence is a human corpse. I have looked at the alleged probable cause facts for these three charges, including the supplemental statement of facts, which I believe was supplied to the public defender's office. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause for all three of these cases to go forward. All three cases will go to the 230th District Court. That's going to be Judge Chris Morton, will you need a court-appointed lawyer from Judge Morton? Would you like the help today of Attorney Chris Henderson from the Public Defender's Office? Ms. Keith. I am requesting a $500,000 bond and in the injury to a child by omission, and tampering with evidence cases, I'm requesting $250,000 bonds, and I am opposed to personal bonds, um, not necessarily because the injury cases are prohibited by this court uh, for personal bonds to be granted, but mostly based on the horrific facts and circumstances of this case, which resulted in the death of a seven-year-old child. <clears throat> As is reflected in the statement of probable cause, officers were called out to a residence in Harris County on Greencrest Drive on October the 24th of this year regarding the death of the minor complainant, who is the child of this defendant. Uh, there were three juvenile witnesses who are also uh, complainants in these cases. <clears throat> there were a 15, 10, and 7-year-old child who are witnesses um, to the incident. Uh, officers arrived, spoke with the 15-year-old child who stated that he found his younger brother, the deceased minor complainant, in a bedroom of the residence sometime around Thanksgiving of last year, 2020. He believed this defendant would call the police told officers that she never did so and that she then had moved out of the apartment leaving them in the residence with his deceased younger brother without adult supervision. She is barred from any contact with her surviving sons or other minors. Her parenting rights will likely be terminated. While the arrests brought comfort, the community still sought answers about how this went undetected so long. A LEAF ISD confirmed in 2020 they filed truancy papers against Gloria Williams when two sons stopped attending school, with the family last enrolled in May of 2020 before Kendrick was killed. The district did a home visit in September of 2020, getting no answer. After that, 
it seems they moved on. Oblivious, those missing students were enduring a nightmare less than two miles from their schools. Other questions remain about extended family's role. According to reports, Kendrick and his brothers have different fathers, one deceased, one absent. Why were paternal grandparents or other kin not monitoring the boy's well-being? Additionally, Kendrick's grandmother, Melody Robinson, revealed concerns about William's parenting were raised years ago. And two. How do we get to this? How did, how could you not reach out and just be like, y'all, I've, it's, we, I've lost control. It's, it's not in a good space. Mm -hmm. And we could, we would have taken, taken all of the kids. The chair. Kendrick is auti was autistic. Um, to my knowledge, when he would come around our family, he would all he did was smile. Cousin Yasmin Craig says Kendrick was mostly nonverbal. She says as a family, they offered to raise Kendrick when he was younger, but William refused. My mom has been asking for Kendrick since the day he was born. All because we knew that a lot, all these kids, eventually she was not going to be able to be the best parent she can be. Family members say Williams had six kids, including the three surviving boys who were also living in the apartment and two girls whom she no longer has parental rights. Robinson has custody of Williams' 13-year-old daughter because she convinced the court Williams was unfit. Robinson also shared that Williams and the 15-year-old had lived with her for about three years at one point. She witnessed Williams verbally abuse the boys then, but after they left her home, Robinson lost touch and didn't know the children were suffering. Every disturbing layer reveals more missed chances to intervene that could have spared Kendrick. So many little opportunities that if seized could have prevented such horror slipping through the cracks. Focus now is on the surviving boys and their recovery. After the investigation, the siblings were hospitalized, assessed as malnourished with bodily injuries. The nine-year-old will require surgery per reports. All three have profound psychological wounds. Advocates say the brothers must stay together. They alone understand the trauma the others endured, so separating them could inflict further damage. Experts also warn placing severely abused and neglected children into foster care has risks. Some say living with relatives or friends, even if imperfect, is better than bouncing through the system from home to home. What's certain is these boys need intense therapy, nurturing caregivers devoted to their healing and protection from additional trauma. However long it takes, their emotional injuries must be treated with urgent care and compassion. The deepest wounds are surely carried by the 15-year-old who fought to save his siblings, yet months earlier could do nothing as Coulter beat the life out of Kendrick. Silently tormented by fear, the violence could target him or his brothers next. Processing such acute trauma at a young age seems unimaginable. Experts say he may grapple with irrational guilt over not stopping Kendrick's murder or calling for help sooner. No child should bear such an overwhelming burden. Thankfully, this brave young man will now have support to process the terrors he endured, and with assistance can still live a beautiful life despite such darkness in his past. As for Brian Coulter, the man who snuffed out an innocent child's life with his bare hands, justice must be served. The death penalty looms in his case, which cannot undo Kendrick's final terrified moments, but may provide some solace. Likewise, Gloria Williams must also face harsh punishment for covering up the murder and abandoning her children. Her actions enabled almost one more year of extreme suffering that cannot be forgiven. Williams' surviving children will likely be permanently removed from her custody, with parental rights terminated, sending a clear message such cruelty against children will never be tolerated. But of course, nothing can replace precious Kendrick. By all accounts, he was a sweet, shy boy who loved playing with his brothers and watching SpongeBob. Relatives said he had an infectious laugh that bubbled up from pure joy, a beautiful child whose life was cut short by evil. This case has so many layers of systemic failure, from the apartment complex dismissing the stench of death to the school system not tracking down truant students 
to protective services never following up on this unstable mother, to neighbors staying silent about suspicious activity. Everyone seemed to be waiting for someone else to investigate warning signs. And tragically, it resulted in a small child enduring a terrifying, lonely, agonizing death. And three other young boys left alone in conditions unfit for animals. Houston must do better. School officials, social workers, police, landlord associations. All safety nets failed Kendrick. This beautiful boy deserved so much more. As heartbroken citizens demand accountability, hopefully changes are coming to prevent such horrors slipping through cracks again. Reform is needed at every level to be more vigilant, responsive, and communicative when children are at risk. Sweet child, this world failed you. So pure and precious was your tiny life. We promise your story will spark change for the better and that your suffering was not in vain. Rest in paradise, Kendrick Lee. You deserved so much more. This has been an extremely heavy, tragic case to examine. But it's cases like these that remind us why we do this work. Evil flourishes in dark corners. Only by shining a bright light can we root it out. Thank you for listening and hug your loved ones a little tighter tonight. Until next time, crime fighters.